This will be a quick lesson on energy and matter flow as it pertains to ecology. Uh, the first thing we'll start with is a quick review of some terms that will be brought up in the video as well as uh, throughout ecology. Uh, the first one being matter. Matter is what everything is made from. All the atoms that make up uh, living things as well as non-living things is what matter is. Now we have specific uh, um, atoms called elements and the most common elements in living things are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. Now the other term that gets brought up is energy. And energy is uh, the power um, source, the power supply for making things happen. Uh, whether it's in the cell, uh, like cellular energy is called ATP, maybe it's light energy, maybe it's heat energy. Um, energy is that power supply. Now the, the living things that have, that can combine the two are called producers. Producers are those organisms on Earth that are, have the ability to do photosynthesis, taking light energy and some of the matter and putting them together to create uh, living things. And those living things would be plants. Uh, so photosynthesis, we'll talk about a little bit later on this video, but producers do photosynthesis and then get eaten by consumers. So consumers um, are the ones that eat things. Uh, they don't have the ability to take in light and make their, make their food or make their energy source. Uh, when they eat, they have to use that energy, and when we use it, uh, releasing that energy is called a, or is a process called respiration. Now, producers also do respiration. If we're going to create the energy via photosynthesis, we probably should be able to use it. Um, we will talk about photosynthesis and respiration a little bit later in this video, but producers do both. Consumers can only do um, the one because they have to eat. They don't get to make their own food. Okay, so we're going to focus on matter here for the next couple minutes. Uh, matter itself has been on Earth as, since Earth has formed. And um, it's always been here, always will be here, because it cycles. It recycles itself over and over again. Now, uh, we bring up three main um, cycles in biology, one called the carbon cycle. Again, carbon is a very important element because um, it is the backbone of all of our macromolecules. And so we look at how is it cycled. Well, um, you can see in the diagram it has a unique cycle. One, it's driven by photosynthesis and into living things. And then we, we, from living things, they die and decompose. And then we burn them or they get eaten and they get, uh, and then respiration happens uh, amongst those um, organisms and they get slowed off. And in any case, it get, ends up back in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. And then once it says atmospheric carbon dioxide, then it can get, uh, it can be reused, whether it's in the ocean or whether it's back in the, um, the biotic stuff. Now, um, this gets mentioned uh, because carbon, um, as its main form is carbon dioxide, is in our air. It's also a greenhouse gas, which means that it'll help keep heat in on Earth, um, which again leads to some issues if we have too much of it there, um, and that might have effect on the living things as well. But um, ultimately, carbon cycles and recycles just like it's shown. Now, the other common cycle that we see is the water cycle. Okay, The water cycle uh, was learned probably back in third or fourth grade, uh, repeated again in seventh grade, and again gets repeated again because it's a, a molecule that we rely on a lot in, in living in the, in the living, uh, or the biosphere, I should say, um, in living things. So we, we're curious about it. We're, we're interested in it. So we, we repeat it. It's worth repeating. We, on, as living things go, we need fresh water for the most part. So this is how we get fresh water. Well, it starts in lakes, streams, rivers. It gets evaporated or maybe gets taken up by plants, and, and they go through a process of letting off uh, some water called transpiration. Um, in either case, it ends up in the atmosphere. As it rises in the atmosphere, the water vapor condenses, um, turns into clouds, goes over the land again, falls as rain or snow. We call it precipitation, and it cycles all over again. And during that process, we clean out any of the pollutants that are in there except for certain things. Like that's how we end up with acid rain. But again, that's, again, when we, when we change what the water cycle looks like, then we have other problems. But this is the way water cycles on Earth. And the other big cycle that you'll hear mentioned in biology is the nitrogen cycle. Uh, we learned, when we learned about nitrogen, we talked about it as being a major component of our atmosphere that as consumers 
we don't use it very often in terms of out of the atmosphere. However, there are other things that do use atmospheric nitrogen, and those are the nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and maybe we use it in natural processes. Uh, when lightning strikes the air, we get all kinds of different things happening, and it ends up in the soil as ammonia or as, a, as, um, um, or as nitrates. And as nitrates get taken up, now that's a, a way that plants can use it, or producers can use it, and as the producers transfer that along the, the line, it ends up in different consumers and different, uh, and then in our different macromolecules. So again, and then it cycles itself all over again. So that is one way um, you'll see matter cycling, and those are three example cycles um, using three of our bigger, um, well, our bigger part, parts of our molecules. So here is now what happens in the biosphere. So the biosphere is what we're really worried about. So how do the living things use it? So here's our chemicals at the top here. That's our chemicals. That's our basic elements of life, the carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur piece. And they get taken in by the, the producers. Okay, And the producers then move that forward. Now they get either eaten by the consumers or they die and they are decomposed. And the consumers then use it, and then they die, and then they're decomposed. And in either case, the decomposers are the last ones with it, and their job is to break it back down into its basic form again. So that's the way material in the living systems work. Works similar to our carbon cycle, similar to our, our nitrogen cycle and our water cycle. It just keeps cycling over and over and over again, going back to the original spot where it started, back to the, the basic elements. And then it goes through the path again, and, and, and it doesn't really change. So that's kind of what is special about matter and materials in our, in our biosphere, is that it just keeps getting recycled. Now, if we take that, and we're going to come back to this diagram, because it's a very important piece, because what's missing is the energy to drive that. Okay. Now, the energy, we have to take a step back and talk about the two processes that are, that are living things that we've already mentioned. Um, do to help get the energy started. The first one um, is going to start with the producers, and producers only. And that process is called photosynthesis. Now, photosynthesis, if we just simply put it, and we're just going to do a simple chemical equation, we're going to leave out some things, but we're going to get the basics down here, um, starts off with taking in carbon dioxide, that's CO2, and water. Now, we know that the producers um, do photosynthesis because they're able to take in some sunlight via chlorophyll. So that arrow right there is produces, but it can only produce if we add sunlight or sun's energy. And it produces, so this is our reactants. Now we're going to do the producers. So what are our products? Our products is going to be glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen. Okay. So if I was going to do that in words, carbon dioxide reacts with water along with adding sun to it gives us glucose, or I'm going to call it sugar, and oxygen. So that's what we get from photosynthesis. Now the sugar is going to be what we're going to term as food or, or an energy source. And we're going to use that to, to develop that. And then they let off carbon di or oxygen as a gas. So that's what photosynthesis is. That's where we start to store uh, our energy and all these um, bonds between C6H12O6. Now that is just the opposite of letting go of the energy, uh, which we call uh, respiration. Uh, both producers and consumers do it, and it looks like this. Okay, I'm going to use blue for this one, so if it's hard to see, I apologize. Here's our glucose, C6H12O6. Okay, that was a mistake. Let's go erase that again. All right, so C6H12O6, and then we're going to take that in along with some oxygen. Now, if you think about starting a fire, you need oxygen for fire. That's kind of starting that process. So we need that, and we need nothing else. This will react well, and then we'll get um, just the opposite return. We're going to get some waste product, carbon dioxide. We're going to get water, but more importantly, we're going to get energy. And I'm going to call, call it ATP. We're going to get lots of ATP. ATP is our energy, and that's what we want in the end of respiration. Carbon dioxide being a toxic uh, gas coming off of it. Again, we want to release it, and we're building it from just the opposite of what we did with photosynthesis. So that is the two basic ones. So we, we take in light energy, um, and then we, we pass it forward, and eventually use it in respiration. Now, so how, how does that play a part into 
the energy cycle within the bio biosphere. So here's our material cycle. So we're going to lay the, the energy cycle in on top of it. So the first thing you're going to notice that in order to get the chemicals from here to here, you're going to need some energy. That energy comes from the sun, right? The sun is our ultimate source of energy uh, for this to happen. So in order, without the sun, this doesn't happen. So with the sun um, uh, available um, to, for the energy source, the chemicals um, and the producers are get put together via photosynthesis, and that's how we that's how we get all the matter to start on on uh, living matter. And then it goes through the cycle. And every time that there's a transfer, the sum of this energy that's that's being that's being acquired is lost as heat. So I'm going to put lost as heat. And, and, and quite honestly, we lose the majority of the energy in, a, in the transfer. We're going to call it 90% lost. Okay? So 10% really is transferred. And that's the way it is true throughout our, our transactions and, and, and transfers of energy within our energy cycle. So as we see all this stuff, we're going to lose heat here. We're going to lose heat here. We're going to lose heat here. Now, because it's not a true cycle, it's more linear, when, we, when the decomposers get the chemicals back to their state here, the energy is lost here. And really, what we should see is a stop sign for energy. Okay, so the energy stops here. Energy's done there. This is the last of the energy, lost this heat, and it's done. So that's where it's different. The energy, the material cycle, and the living things allow that to happen. And then as we transfer and transfer and transfer, the decomposers are the last ones to break it down. The, the materials pass on, and the energy stops. Okay, So that's the two different cycles that we see on top of one another. You also see it as this. Here's an energy pyramid. So now we look at how much is available. So you can see that we are going to need a lot of um, producers down at the bottom of our pyramid to allow for that energy to drive upward. So here's our pyramid. And we also incorporate the tr trophic levels. Here's our trophic levels right here in blue. That's our hierarchy of eating. So you can see that the producers are at the bottom. They're the ones that are the base. They have the most of them. And they have the most energy here. So here's an example of how much energy might be available. Uh, maybe it's 1,000 kilocalories uh, per gram or per pound or per uh, unit of measurement here. And then as we work our way up, notice the pyramid gets skinnier. There's less available energy, which means there's less organisms that can exist at that level, and then et cetera, et cetera. Now, we set up these levels, these trophic levels, by food chains. So really what we're looking at is plant leading to a primary. A primary consumer is anything that eats that particular plant, and then it gets eaten by a secondary consumer that gets finally eaten by a tertiary consumer. Now, notice that when we get to the top of the pyramid, there's not very many organisms there because, again, there's not enough energy to have a lot of young. There's not enough energy to, to maintain a large body mass necessarily, and so they have to eat a lot of food to get the energy that they need. So that's kind of a, a twofold thing. The trophic levels, you can see the relationship, and we can see the relationship of how much energy is available and how that affects the amount of organisms that can hang out at that particular trophic level. And that's where we'll end today. Uh, again, with just a quick, a quick lesson on energy flow um, and bringing up some of the more important pieces of that.